I'm just goofing. New boot goofing. Oh. you doing huh poor guy you get tied up getting into trouble huh yeah all right so today's project is actually not my truck today it's my dad's truck it's a 2001 with a 24 valve cummins in it uh, he bought this thing brand new and um in 2000 i drove off the lot with him and it it had uh 90 miles on it it's got about 140,000 on it now it has a five speed nv 4500 manual transmission in it. This thing's it's been a pretty good truck. Um, had a couple issues thus far, but what I'm doing on it today is the timing cover gasket is leaking and the seal and or both. I don't know which one it is, but I'm going to change them both right now, swap it out. And well, the easiest way to do all this is take the radiator, drain it a little bit so you can take that upper hose off, obviously, get that out of the way. And if you're unfamiliar with the 24 valve, they have a little catch can right there. That's the breather crankcase vent thing. Uh, yeah, after a while, it's filled up and it was leaking over. I mean, after 100 and something thousand miles, he didn't clean it or nothing. So this one just vents to the ground like it would do on a 12 valve. So get that one out of the way. And um, let's see here. Supposed to be able to unscrew that cap, but she ain't moving. Then I'm gonna just take the whole fan hub assembly, let's take that straight off of there, and take it out with the shroud, get that thing all the way out of the way, and then um, take the harmonic balancer off, and then we're in the home stretch, and then I just pull the cover off, and we're good to go. assembly without taking that thing off you can loosen up all those bolts right there and take the pulley back but if you just loosen these ones up and then you take your little guy loosen that one and you just back it out along with these you can work it all the way out because you cannot get that bolt out unless you take the pulley off um, and I don't want to do that so I've done this many times before so I'm not too worried about it we just got to back these up evenly enough so that this thing, the whole hub assembly can slide out with the head of that bolt. Looks like that front main is definitely a source of a leak right there. So we'll go ahead, a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts all the way around, and I believe it's a 15 millimeter for the um, harmonic balancer. So I'll go ahead and snatch those off there, and then, uh, yeah. And to hold the engine in place, I will be using a barring tool so that I can. You know, so the engine won't move. To insert the barring tool, it is back straight through there. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's a little rubber plug. You pull that out and you stick this in there with a ratchet on there, and the engine won't turn over anymore because this, if you're unfamiliar, goes straight onto the flywheel and uh, it locks it in place. 
on. You get a fancy gray gay one that's got water in it or fluid dampener. <laughs> it's got a bubble right there. Huh? Yeah, she's trying to herniate a little bit. What will cause that? Miles. Another common thing that will happen is your crank where the seal rides on it, it will cause a groove. So when you put another seal in, you want to have it in a different location so it's not in the same groove. You know, just a different depth on how far you put it into your timing cover. But you can see this one, the last time, this must have been the third time that I've done this because it leaked pretty soon after I did the first one. So we blamed it on the, uh, the groove that was in there. So it's got a sleeve on there now. Pretty simple kit, you use the same. Um, seal but you can get a sleeve in the same packaging so you put that on there all you have to do is you get it started then you put your harmonic balancer on there and just work it on there bolt by bolt and it slides right on there i don't i've never had to take one off but even this one here you can see where the dust shields wore down on it just a little bit and then the uh, seal itself is kind of grooved i can feel it just ever so slightly but you can see it doesn't look like that gasket was leaking it was doing its job so it was definitely the seal so let me go ahead and press out that seal Bing. Simple as that. She's out. Oh, he woke up. Oh, he woke up. Oops, bada bing. So, slide that sucker in there. So the seal itself is the same from at least 04 back to whenever. I would imagine they're all still the same, but they uh, they changed the timing gear housing or the timing housing. But this kit, you cannot get this if you went into O'Reilly or whatever and you asked for this seal for a 24 valve truck. It won't come with the gasket. You have to ask for a 12 valve one, and it'll come with the gasket. And um, I was the first one to pull this truck apart and all it had from the factory was silicone. So I had to clean all that crap off and then I was like, you know what the heck, I'm going to try this out and see if it fits the next time around. And uh, sure enough, same exact freaking cover. So you get a 12 valve gasket, seals the same, 
I'm pretty sure all Cummins probably the same. Don't quote me on that, but at least up from 12 valve to 04. I doubt that they're changed since then, but the seal is the same. So I'm going to take this back to the press and put the seal in it. There we go. Take a look, see. Yeah, buddy. Life is so, so much easier with that press. Holy crap. I don't know what its ratio is to power on that, but just get it square and it freaking goes right in there. I don't know how many of these things I've done. But I used a hammer and a little punch trying to get that thing set, but oh, that's money. It's nice and even all the way across. You don't have to worry about no side to side tilt the action. And where'd my little, you got to take this little sucker and put this in there. This is so that seal, obviously the way it's angled, it's very hard to get anything going this direction to get onto it because uh, that's the way a seal works. So you take this little sucker. All right, so sometimes this part kind of sucks. My gasket glue without putting a crap load on there, that's not going to stay. Take your little guider, stuff it down in there like that. What that does is it flares out the seal a little bit so it can go on there easier. But since this one has that sleeve on there, that thing opens up quite a bit more and it makes it just enough to be tricky and annoying. And that'll make you frustrated real quick because it doesn't go on there just as easy as it should. But we're going to make it happen. All right, boys retract my previous statement scared Sally off but this is a kit right here that's for the sleeve I ended up having to take it off because I was wrong the stock sleeve the inside diameter is ever so slightly different and it is an absolute pain to get on there and I think it would have been too tight so a little bit of heat and a couple pry bars and this thing actually popped right off so we got lucky uh, we're gonna hit it with some emery cloth on the crank just to clean it up a little bit there's not too much grooves but we're taking her back a step I don't know this thing helped but it didn't really help it ended up leaking just the same so uh, took a simple job and kind of spiced it up a little bit but we're getting it done no biggie nice there's v-belt if anybody wanted to know all right, let's see how well this works now. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Cakewalk. All right, boys. Let's take a look at it blind the camera. Let's get some energy back into this video, V-Belt. We're slacking. Got to double check, make sure that seal is not bunched up and screwed up. Looks a-okay. Alright. Got all those suckers tight. Did a full circle. Might do one more just to double check because we don't want a, any leaks for an error. But. Going to throw this thing on there. Tighten those up. Yeah.
back on, breather on, bolts are real tight. Battery connector across the top's all back on there. All that's hooked up. I need to hook up the hoses for the washer fluid tank and put the radiator fluid back in there. But there's one very important step that uh, you do not want to mess up. And that is, I'll give you guys a second. Maybe comment below what your guess is on this. But it's something, somebody did this in school. We didn't know I went to mechanic school. But somebody did this and uh, yeah, it broke some stuff. So this is something you do not want to forget. Um, go ahead, just I'll give you one more second to think. All right, I expect you to put in the comments below what your guess is on the very most crucial thing in this process that I've done. Some people don't even do this um, to start off with. But something that you do not want to mess up. That guy right there. You do not want to mess up and leave that barring tool in the bell housing like that. That is just no good. Like I said, somebody in, in my school in the class next to me, he actually left a barring tool in a 6.7. And uh, yeah, the housing, it was a L delete out the side kit on that one. It broke all kinds of stuff. Uh, luckily his school had extra parts, but he had to swap it all over himself. But do not leave that thing in there because that will, that will, it's a stupid mistake. Very easily forgotten about. Like the whole time I put it in there, I'm thinking, do not forget it, do not forget it. So do not leave the barring tool in the freaking thing. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show you guys filling up with coolant. All right, so a couple things about this truck. This is my dad's truck. Like I said earlier, bought it brand new. Um, it was a cabin chassis truck. He built and installed the flatbed, which is actually a, it is a dump bed. Some real fabrication right there. But this truck, it's only got 140 something thousand miles on it. I think it's on its third BP44. Uh, common thing, if you're looking into buying one of these, people have asked me what I, you know, if they're gonna be buying a 24 valve, a second gen 24 valve truck. Um, and when I say 24 valve, I mean BP44 injection pump style, second gen. Uh, I don't like them, to be honest with you. This is the one truck, um, a second gen. It's got to be a 12 valve in my book. My dad's had this truck, you know, since 2000. He's done three injection pumps. It's running a pass on it now, but it all comes down to uh, common things that fail on these trucks. And if you're looking to buy one, it's something you should ask the owner if they have been addressed. And that is if the lift pump and or the injection pump have been changed, preferably both, because if your lift pump goes out, your injection pump can keep the truck running. It's, it's sucking enough fuel on its own to keep the truck running. Sounds good, it's not. It will ruin the injection pump and gone. So uh, it wasn't too many years into owning this truck for my dad that the injection pump died. Didn't know what the problem was. Put a new injection pump on it come to find out it was the lift pump failed like i was saying so one thing after another uh you got the fast it's running a fast 95 on it now uh he's got this rigged up so he knows he's running fuel pressure because if you lose fuel pressure to this it's dead it'll last a little while but so that's something you need to check out um if like i said if they ran it for very long at all without a lift pump that injection pump could be on his last leg so but he's uh he's running a blue chip diesel vp44 on it now so this truck it's got a little bit of power it's not like a smoke train or nothing but she gets up and goes but it's looking like we're gonna need a gasket up here but other than that it's got a bd exhaust brake on it one of the vacuum models and the dump bed other than that she's pretty much bone stock I have, I think he rebuilt the turbo. I mean, it's got, the turbo's been rebuilt once. 
But other than that, it's it's bone stock. Work truck. He hardly ever cleans the interior out on this thing. But it's doing its job. And shoot, he's hauled he's hauled some heavy weight with his rig, but he hardly ever tows with it anymore. He's got a gooseneck ball and stuff on it, but now since I got the trucks to tow, he doesn't tow with this one really besides uh, bumper pole. He tows his little Kubota. But other than that, that's about all on this rig. I think I'm all wrapped up here. He's got the air cleaner out. He just cleaned that and it's oiling, so I'm not going to fire it up right now, but same old, same old. Everything's been back together. But those are some things that are very common for these trucks to have is that front main seal rear main seal that one's more more in depth of a install on that one but front main shoot these things honestly it seems like they go out all the freaking time but unless you're biting into a snag in a road like what i had to deal with with that sleeve i honestly thought it was gonna fit i felt like i had installed uh, a stock one a stock seal on a crank with a sleeve on it before but I guess I was wrong so I now know 100% that the sleeve requires a different seal so live and learn but this project is all done so hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't I'll see you next time thanks guys and um, by the way I ordered some hats be on the lookout for those jackets and stuff to come I just gotta iron out some details but thanks guys see you next time bye